What's up, bros? Today we're gonna talk about something which puts my fat ass on fire every year, but this year really tore it apart. And that is 2021 Cup Hockey by Upper Deck. The first thing is that this 2021 product is released in late February 2023. And please don't buy into this usual bullshit of obese Upper Deck executives about supply chain problems, etc. Because uh, Panini for example put out uh, all on card outers 2021 flawless basketball more than uh, a year ago this delay automatically means that there is no rocky content in this product to talk about in a usual year even if uh, a product is released at the end of the season and uh, no rocky did well there is still a chance that uh, some of them will be able to turn it around in their sophomore year but if the product is released two years after the season it is very painfully clear where everybody is going on and in this case we know that Luffy and uh, Byfield are totally certified busts. Yes, we have uh, some uh, reasonable wingers there with uh, Robertson and Kaprizov, but I remember the first law of uh, the hockey card collecting that uh, a defender doesn't sell well unless it's uh, Bobby Orr and a winger doesn't sell well unless it's uh, Ovechkin. So Rocky-wise, all we are left with are some semi-stars from Lilliput markets such as uh, Team Stutzle. This delay also really hurts the veteran cards. I'm not sure if there is anybody who is dreaming about pulling a semi-scrub player such as Oliver ekman Larson from an ultra-premium product such as the Cup, but I'm 110% sure that there is nobody dreaming about pulling him on a team from which he has been away for two years now. Then maybe there is some premium legends content to justify a very steep price tag. This one card shows everything what is wrong with Cup Legend cards. My first question is to you. Do you think this auto here is of Ace Bailey who played in the NHL from 1926 to 1934? Nope, it's an auto of his son, also Ace Bailey and who also played in the NHL but in the 70s. My second question is to Upper Deck. Look at this terrible corner. Look at this terrible edge. I'm not a hobby purist by any measure. And I understand that with hard signed autos, their condition suffers because uh, hockey players are busy and they jerk off with the one hand while signing these uh, cards with another hand. But goodness gracious, this card has never traveled anywhere from the Upper Deck factory. Is it too much to ask that Upper Deck workers don't jerk off with uh, one hand while putting this card together with another hand? My third question is again to Upper Deck. How cheap can you be with a product which costs over thousand dollars per tin? You cannot even license a photo of Ace Bailey for this card. How come Leaf can license a photo of Ace Bailey for their product which costs less than $200 per box. Okay, maybe some more recent legends have sensible cards in this bonfire of a product. But nope, the whole idea of a multiplayer hard-signed auto is that there is one piece of paper which all of these superstars held in their hands. However, this is not the case here. There are three separate cards sent to three different players and then a their arts class project children of Upper Deck employees put them together using California public school glue. How do I know that? Well, I have had some of these cards in my collection and the three pieces will come apart in less than one year. Again, the contrast to Panini, who is able to put out very sensible on-card multiplayer autos is just way too stark 